Hello and welcome to this Astronomy in Islam Ramazan 2021 video. My name's Hannah Banyard, I'm an astronomer at the Royal Observatory Greenwich and I'm going to talk to you about the science behind the moon and how and why we see it. Afterwards, director of the New Crescent Society, Imad Ahmed, will talk about the Islamic calendar and how you can cite the New Crescent moon for Ramadan. The moon has held great importance to cultures worldwide for thousands of years, and as its position and shape repeat in regular cycles in our sky, it's long been used for timekeeping. The moon travels around the Earth in space. It completes one orbit around the Earth in 27.3 days. Its orbit is elliptical, that's a bit of a squashed circle, and its orbit is inclined, meaning it's tilted, so it's sometimes higher and sometimes lower in its orbit. It doesn't orbit around the centre of the Earth. Now we see the moon here on Earth only because it reflects light from the sun. The moon does not produce any of its own light. So depending on where the moon is in its orbit around the Earth, we see a different shape of the moon in the sky known as a phase. As the moon orbits around our planet, different portions of the surface will be lit up as the moon reflects more or less sunlight. There are eight phases of the moon, beginning with the new moon, where the side of the moon that is facing towards the Earth is not being lit up by the sun at all. The phase of the moon then moves on to a waxing crescent, where the first portion of the surface is lit by the sun and can be seen from Earth. Then the phases continue to first quarter, waxing gibbous, and then full moon, where the entire face of the moon seen from the Earth is fully lit by the sun. Then the phases begin to get smaller with a waning gibbous, last quarter, waning crescent, and then the cycle begins again with a new moon. Now it takes 29.5 days for us to see the same phase of the moon in the sky again. Now that's a bit longer than the time it takes for the moon to complete one orbit. This is because the Earth is also moving in space around the sun, so it takes a little bit longer for the sun, Earth and moon to be aligned again to give us the same phase. In Islam, months end at the new moon and begin at the sighting of the new crescent. This is the first time the moon can be seen after the new moon phase. The new crescent cannot be seen immediately after the new moon. There are certain criteria needed for it to be visible. Firstly, the sun must be below the horizon. This is because it needs to be dark enough for the small slither of the moon to be visible. Next, the moon needs to be above the horizon so we can see it. And finally, the moon and the sun need to be far enough apart in the sky. This is known as the Dangen limit, which says the sun and moon need to be separated by around five to seven degrees. That's about the same width as your three fingers held out at arm's length. In the Northern Hemisphere, in places like the UK, the new crescent will appear as a backward C shape. But on the other side of the world, in the Southern Hemisphere, it will appear the other way round as a C shape. The new crescent visibility varies worldwide, just as sunset and sunrise times do. So not everyone will be able to see it at the same time or even on the same day. The new crescent moon this month will signal the start of Ramadan. And here is Imar to tell you more. Thank you so much, Hannah, for that great explanation. My name's Imad Ahmed. I'm the director of New Crescent Society, and we're an organization who work with the Royal Observatory to celebrate the incredible relationship between astronomy and Islam. I'm now going to go through three things with you. Firstly, I'm going to give you a background to the Islamic calendar. Secondly, I'm going to show you how we can use science to accurately predict when Ramadan will begin. And thirdly, I'm going to practically show you how you can cite the moon for Ramadan this year. The Islamic calendar is a lunar visibility calendar. That means the length of a month roughly corresponds to how long it takes for the moon to complete all of its phases. Now, as we've heard from Hannah, that's about 29 and a half days. You can't have a month with a half a day. So in the Islamic calendar, a month can have 29 days or 30 days. And about half the months have 29 days in a year and the rest will have 30 days. How do we decide if a month has 29 or 30 days? Well, that will depend on when we can first see the new crescent moon of that month. On the 29th, of each Islamic calendar month, Muslims will go out after sunset looking for the new crescent moon. If they can see the moon on the 29th, 
it means that month had 29 days and the new month begins. If we cannot see the new crescent moon, it means that month had 30 days. And that's why, for example, some years Ramadan has 29 days, but in other years Ramadan has 30 days. This means if we want to use our scientific data to accurately predict when Ramadan will begin, all we have to do is go to the 29th of the month before Ramadan and see if the moon is visible or not. If we can see the moon on that day, it means Ramadan will begin. And if we cannot see the moon, then we add and wait an additional day. So let's take a look at the data. This is a predicted moon visibility map for the 29th of this Islamic month called Sha'ban, which will fall on Monday the 12th of April. This data for this map comes from the UK's HM Nautical Almanac Office. If the moon is visible, then it is indicated by the green zone. As you can see, according to this map, the moon will not be visible in the UK and actually, nor will the moon be visible in any of our neighbouring countries in Europe or even in Africa. This means the month of Sha'ban will have 30 days and we will have to wait one more day for Ramadan to begin. Let's look at the map for the next day, which will be on Tuesday the 13th of April. As you can see, now the UK and indeed most of the world is covered in green, which indicates we are going to be able to see the moon on Tuesday night. This means Ramadan will begin Tuesday evening because Islamic dates begin from the evening and the first day of fasting will be Wednesday the 14th of April. Now, I know some Muslims will begin fasting on Tuesday and that's because some Muslim communities in the UK follow the Islamic calendar of other countries. And so when Muslims in the UK follow the calendars of other countries, it's natural that the Muslims in the UK will begin their months on different days because remember different parts of the world might see the new crescent on different dates and actually some of those other countries might have a different method for conducting their Islamic calendar which doesn't depend on the visibility of the moon. Now if you're planning to see the new crescent moon yourself on Tuesday the good news is it's really easy to do and you might even be able to do it from your own home. You don't need binoculars, you're not going to need a telescope. All you need is a clear view of the western horizon where you can see the sunset. This is because the new crescent moon always emerges near the sunset. So this is how to do it. First, watch and mark exactly where the sun sets on Tuesday evening. Then, wait around half an hour after sunset when it gets darker. You should see the Ramadan moon appear near where the sun sets slightly to the left. Actually, if you're near the equator or in the southern hemisphere, the moon might appear above the sunset or to the right. But where we are in the UK, you'll see the moon a bit to the left of sunset. Wherever you are in the world, it's somewhere near the sunset. Good luck sighting wherever you are. And when you do see the moon for Ramadan, Ramadan Mubarak from the New Crescent Society and the Royal Observatory Greenwich.